Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how to set up Uptime Kuma on a Ubuntu 22.04 installation. It's going to be a super easy setup today. Literally just one command after we um, install the right packages. Uh, I'm going to show you why though. It's really nice. If we log in here, we go to status.beamnetworks.dev. As you can see here on um, this status page, we have status.beamnetworks.dev. This is actually my public status page that anybody can go to right now and they can see the status of my services. Um, we have all, serv all systems operational. We have a nice page here, a nice layout of each different service we offer. Um, these are DNS services that we have for our private internal systems. Um, a proxy we got there. We have some cloud VMs. We have Nextcloud, um, the documentation website, a password manager, um, our main site, and a floating IP um, between a few Nginx instances. So as you can see, I have selected a few services that I have that have made available to the public to see the status of. Um, but that is about it. It is really cool because this um, software automatically monitors the status of these services. I'm going to show you how to set that up right here. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you want to do actually is update your Ubuntu instance. I already did this as you probably saw as I was starting this video, but you're going to want to run sudo apt update dash y and, and sudo apt upgrade dash y. You're going to make sure everything updates, you're going to click enter through all the prompts. Um, make sure everything is fully up to date before we continue with the installation. Okay, so now that everything is up to date, we're going to install Docker. We're going to say sudo apt install docker.io. This is going to install. We are going to be running uptime Kuma on Docker because it's the easiest way to maintain it in terms of updates. Um, the creator of it seems to offer a update command for Docker. It's what I've been using for a few years now, and it has worked 100% of the time, never had any issues. I feel like I'd rather show you guys the most reliable way to run Uptime Kuma. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say sudo user mod a capital G, and we're going to say Docker, and we're going to say beam networks as our username. And now we're going to say sudo... So what that did was it added our group to the Docker group. That way we don't always have to use sudo with a Docker command. You don't have to log out and log back into that VM for that change to become in effect. But um, I just like to run this. That way you don't always have to use sudo with Docker. So the next thing is we're going to paste in this long command here. This is available in the description down below. I'm not going to make a documentation post for this specific video because it is just one command, essentially. Um, so this is the Docker run command. We're going to run... Um, it's going to restart always, so on reboot, it's going to start again. If it fails, it's going to restart again. We're going to forward port 3001, and we're going to use the uptime kuma volume on app data folder. It's going to automatically create that for us. The name is going to be uptime kuma, and this is the package we are going to be installing um, from the maintainer of uptime kuma. So I'm actually going to add sudo in front of this command because I have not logged out and logged back into this VM. So I'm going to add sudo here. And we're going to run this command, and it's going to download Uptime Kuma and set it up for us. And we are going to be able to go and log into this Uptime Kuma instance in just a few seconds. All right, so as you can see, it has downloaded the image, and it's going to say it started Uptime Kuma here in just a second. And that should be it. Yep, there we go. So now we're going to go back to Chrome. Actually, I'm going to grab the IP of this VM right here. We're going to go into Chrome here, and we're going to type in this on port 3001. And as you can see, we are on the setup page. So we're going to say Beam Networks, and you're going to create a password. So you're going to type in a username and password in these prompts. We're going to click Create. Password is too weak. Well, that's cool. Fine, I'll make it longer. Do not match. There we go. All right, now we have uh, created our password. We are in. Um, I'm going to show you a few things. First of all, let's go to Settings here. So there's a lot of things you can do. Um, first of all, we're going to set the primary base URL. So if you're going to proxy this and make it publicly available, you're going to type in your public domain as this primary base URL. Um, but other than that, we don't really need too much on here. Uh, the only thing is if you want it to be um, available on Google and stuff, I would discourage it because you don't always want this kind of stuff available on Google. You're going to set your server time zone as well. Next, we're going to go to notif notifications. We're going to set up notification. Now, there's all kinds of things you can do for notifications. You can do email, Telegram, um, Google Chat. I'm not going to show you how to set most of these up today. Actually, I don't. I'm not going to show you how to set up any of these today. They are pretty self-explanatory. Um, but I will go briefly over the Gmail one. There's an email SMTP, and you're going to say SMTP.gmail.com on port 465, and. Oh, and you want to use TLS, this is going to be your Google account, username, and password. If you have 2FA, you need to generate an app password. And your from email is going to be, uh, you're going to say the name here. So we're going to say Beam Networks. And this is going to be from 
and this is going to be from email at gmail.com. You're gonna fill this in with your email, that your Google email account. You're gonna fill this in with your Google account email right there. Next, you're gonna say to email, so this is what is going to be alerted when there is an outage. So we can say email one at gmail.com. It's going to email that email address when there's an outage. You can also format your subject um, differently if you want, and you can click save. So that is a pretty quick setup there. Uh, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to actually go back to dashboard. We're going to add a new monitor here. This is um, how Uptime Kuma monitors for outages. So if we scroll down here, as you can see, all the different options here. Uh, I really do like push, by the way. If you have a publicly available instance of Uptime Kuma, you can use push to have a bash script automatically call this URL every 60 seconds or so. And if it doesn't receive that request in 60 seconds, then you know the service is down. Um, it's kind of a nice way of doing it. Instead of this instance of Uptime Kuma reaching out to the service, the service reaches out to Uptime Kuma. Um, depending on your firewall settings, you might need to do that. So the next thing is um, what I normally use is HTTPS monitoring. So if you want to monitor a website, let's say we want to monitor beam networks at dev, and let's call this beam networks. Oops, networks. We scroll down here, we click save. Uh, this is going to start monitoring the um, website. It also actually shows you the certificate expiration date of your website as well. So as you can see, this one ends in 35 days, but I believe Cloudflare manages certificates for me anyway. So um, let's go, let's add a new monitor again. We're going to go to um, ping and we're going to say friendly name. We're going to call this Cloudflare and I'm going to give this the host name of 1.1.1.1 and click save. This is going to monitor Cloudflare and I'm going to add Google as well. This is kind of the base services I like to add because Cloudflare and Google are a major portion of the internet and monitoring the connections to those two services is usually pretty beneficial to me. So I'm gonna click save again. So as you can see, we have our three different monitors over here. Um, I did not go over the settings of them. I'm gonna do that now. So first we're gonna go to edit here. Um, I would turn on your email notifications. Now, if you have multiple notifications, you can have different notifications for different platforms. So if you only wanted Cloudflare alerts on your Telegram, you could do that. If you only wanted email, if you only wanted Google alerts on your email, you could do that as well. Um, that is how you do that. The other thing is the heartbeat interval. This is how often it's going to check that service for an outage. So as you can see, the default is 60 seconds. I like to do about 30 seconds and I give it one retry. And during that retry interval, I give it 20 seconds. So basically, if it does not, if it sees something is offline in 30 seconds, when it checks every 30 seconds, it's going to retry once, but it's going to wait 20 seconds before it retries. And it's going to wait 24 seconds to time out. I usually just leave that. Uh, this one is really annoying sometimes, but if you have a critical service, this might be beneficial to you. This is going to resend the notification X amount of times. Um, over and over again until the service is back online. So if you say a thousand, it's going to give you a thousand emails to get that service back online. The next thing is certificate expiry, certificate expiry notification. Um, that is nice if you do manage your own certificates. So in my case, like Let's Encrypt, if I were to have a local service here that has a local certificate, it'd be nice to monitor the expiration date of that certificate. If we get close to that, um, Uptime Kuma can actually remind you to renew that certificate. Tags are nice. If you want to organize your services, you can actually search by different tags on here and on your dashboard, which I'll show you in a second. You can also have certain tags appear on the dashboard. So ping is basically the same thing, except you can change your packet size. The default is 56, but the settings are basically the same. And for most of these services, you'll find they are the same. I believe like MySQL here, you have to actually enter in your login, obviously. But besides that, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. The nice thing too, actually with Uptime Kuma, you can monitor for a keyword on a website. So let's say you're looking for something to be in stock. You can say in, you're monitoring for in stock. And if it sees that pop up on the website during its status check, then it will actually alert you, which is really cool. Okay, so let's go over here to status page. We're gonna click new status page. We're gonna name this default. And we're gonna say status dash default. And we're gonna click next. And this is going to be our first status page. So. We have nothing on here, obviously. Uh, there's a lot of settings over here you can change. I'll let you look through those yourself, but here we can add our different services. So let's say we just wanna show, let's make a group here. We're gonna say cloud services. And we just want to put Google and Cloudflare on here. We can monitor those two services there. And let's say we want to say self-hosted services. We can monitor Beam Networks separately. Now if you click save, as you can see, we have Beam Networks Cloudflare and Google all separated here into their own categories. And keep in mind that if you log out, you won't see these options to go to dashboard or edit status page. So 
that is about it. Thank you for watching this video. One quick thing as well, a little bonus here, maintenance. If you want to schedule maintenance, so let's say you're scheduling maintenance to have your entire site offline for about an hour, you can schedule that on here so you won't get down alerts um, and they won't count against your uptime, I don't think. Um, but you can select the maintenance windows here that way you're not going to get frequent alerts. Or if you have nightly backups or something, you can have it during that maintenance window not alert you, which is really cool. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to you. I hope you like Uptime Kuma. For updating instructions, I would check out the Uptime Kuma GitHub page. Um, the maintainer does a really great job at keeping it up, the, up to date. And there's a nice command you can run on there for Docker to update Uptime Kuma. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.